All right, so let's start week 10. Uh, we're going to go through chapters 9.2 and 9.3 this week, and then uh, that'll be it for exam three. I think in general you guys will find this stuff at least somewhat interesting. This is the part of stats that gets used the most uh, out in the real world. So let's go through linear regression. All right, so what are we going to do uh, in this chapter? We are going to find the equation of a regression line, and then we are going to predict y values using that regression equation. All right, so what the heck are regression lines? Right. After verifying that the linear correlation between two variables is significant, all right, next we determine that the equation of the line that best models that data. All right, and this, this, this line that best models our data, we are going to refer to as the regression line. And it can be used to predict the value of y for a given value of x. All right, this is how we predict stock values, guys. All right, so what is a residual? You're going to come across this word, so it's important to know what it means. The difference between the observed y value and the predicted y value for a given x value on the line. All right, we're going to refer to this as the residual. So, for example, let's say that we have a regression line for Google stock price tomorrow. And our line predicts that the Google stock price tomorrow is $540, okay? And tomorrow, at the end of the day, when the stock market closes, the actual value ended up being $521. Then the difference between $521 and $540 is referred to as our residual. Okay, so again, we're going to use this kind of script D sub I, so you'll see me read it as D sub I, okay, is going to be the observed Y value, so what actually happens, minus the predicted Y value. Okay, so again, the predicted Y value comes from the regression line. The observed Y value is what actually happens in real life. A regression line can also be referred to as a line of best fit, okay, so it's the line that best fits our data, all right, and it's the line for which the sum of the squares of the residuals is a minimum. So if I take each of these residuals, okay, so let's go back to this, to this slide. So if I take each of these residuals, so here I've got D1, D2, D3, D4, D5 and D6. So if I get these residuals and I square them and I add them all up, then this line that we see, oops, let me go back here. This line that we see, all right, our regression line is the one that minimizes that value. All right? The equation of a regression line for an independent variable x and a dependent variable y is y hat equals mx plus b. Notice I'm saying y hat. y hat is going to be our symbol for predicted y values. But in general, you guys should be com comfortable with this because you know lines. You know m stands for slope and b the y-intercept. Okay, so again, here m is our slope, b is our y-intercept, and again, y hat is our predicted y value for some given x value. All right, so I want to run through this really quickly. This is the slide that shows you what you would be having to do if I didn't let you use Excel. All right, so back in the day, before we had Excel and uh, TI calculators, uh, students had to calculate the slope and y-intercept by hand. And I just want you to see, I'm not going to go through all of this, but it's, it's a very difficult formula using our data, using our y-values, our x-values, Okay, all right. Uh, this is important to know. Okay, so you guys know y, uh, y bar and x bar. You should know these symbols as the mean of the y values and the mean of the x values. All right, the regression line always passes through the point x bar, y bar. So whatever, so let's take that coordinate, our x average and our y average. That, our regression line will always, 100% of the time, pass through that point. 
Okay, so let's talk about finding the equation of a regression line. All right, we've seen this data before uh, in the last lecture. And what we're going to do, and I have attached some slides at the end walking you through how to do this in, in Excel. Okay, so, um, unfortunately, I work on a Mac. Okay, and with the Mac, I don't have access to something called the Data Analysis Tool Pack. All right, so either working in the lab on a PC computer, working with me in a face-to-face -face session, uh, you know, working on your own on your own PC, you need to install this what's called Data Analysis Tool Pack. And again, I walk you through it at the end of the lecture. Uh, for those of you who use Macs. Um, you can either come to my office and I'll be more than happy to show you the workaround on a Mac. There's a program out there we can download called Stat Plus, which is very similar. Uh, or you can just say, hey, I think when it comes to regression, I'm just going to use one of the lab computers. Okay, so what we're going to do in Excel is we are going to put the GDP data in one column and we're going to put the carbon dioxide emission in another column. And in data, once you have data analysis tool pack installed, which is which is pretty easy, uh, you will just go into the data analysis tool pack, select an option called regression. You will input your y values first, which is going to be your carbon dioxide emission. All right, that's what we're predicting, and then you're going to put in your x values, which is our gross domestic product. Okay, and then you're basically going to click OK and ta da, like that. Excel is going to give you the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, is there another way to do it? Yes, uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. All right, but also you're going to want to sketch this regression line. All right, using any two values. All right, so how are we going to sketch the regression line? All right, the easiest way to sketch it, you guys, is going to be to Highlight all your data, so highlight your GDP and your carbon dioxide emissions, okay, and go into insert chart, insert a scatter chart, and when you insert a scatter chart, you have an option of putting on a regression line, and when you put on that regression line, it will give you the actual equation for the regression line and actually draw the line as we see it here. Okay, so let me sh quickly show you what I'm talking about. So let's pull up Excel. So I've highlighted my data and I'm waiting on Excel to come up. Right, I'm going to choose just a blank worksheet here. All right, I'm going to paste my data in. And with it highlighted, I'm going to go up here into charts and I'm going to say, okay, I want a scatter chart. All right, and in the Mac, um, as well as in the PC, you have options here in chart layout, and we see something called a trend line. That is what I want. A trend line is the same thing as a regression line. I'm going to go to trend line, and I'm going to choose linear. All right. The problem right now is I don't know what exactly what that line is telling me. All right. So I need to go back into trend line options. And under options, I'm going to say display the equation on the chart. And you can see, I'm going to try to bring this over so you can see with the slide that we have our regression line. Okay, so that's another way to get your regression line um, along with uh, graphing it. Okay, let's go through another way using Excel that you can do this. All right, so let's um, go back to the old faithful data. Okay, so here, wait, let me go into another sheet here. I'm going to paste my data, so my XYs, and I've got another set of columns here. 
Okay, so I've got my data for Old Faithful in. And what we can do, if I just want the slope, I can type equals index parentheses and then line EST. And I see it's telling me, hey, I need to know what are your Y's. Well, these are my Y's, comma, put in my X values, right? Close my parentheses, comma, and if I want the slope, I'm going to say 1. And so this is going to be our slope. And if I want the y-intercept, then it's exactly the same. So I'm going to go up here and copy my previous function, except that that 1 changes to a 2. And that's going to give me my y-intercept. So I've shown you, well, I'm in the process of showing you three different ways that you can get a regression line in Excel. You can install data analysis tool pack, in which case there is a regression option. You can use a scatter chart. So again, I can grab my data and I can say insert a scatter chart. And to that scatter chart, I can add a trend line with the equation displayed. Okay, so we've got data analysis tool pack with a regression option. We've got a scatter chart with adding a linear trend line. Or we have functions of, of uh, LIN line ST, okay. Uh, where we put in our X's, we put in our Y's, and then we put in our X's, and we choose one or two based on whether or not we want the slope or Y-intercept. So there's a bunch of ways we can do regression in Excel. All right, what about using the regression line? Because this is, this is where the regression line is important. Uh, at the end of the day, we want to use it to predict Y values. Right, so the regression equation for the gross domestic product and carbon dioxide emissions data was y hat equals 196.152x plus 102.289. We want to use this equation to predict the expected carbon dioxide emissions for the following gross domestic products. So we've got $1.2 trillion, $2.0 trillion, and $2.5 trillion. Anytime you're asked, to, asked for a predicted value, all we're going to do is we're going to plug these X's into our regression line and get a Y hat value or a predicted value. So first I'm going to plug 1.2 in for X uh, and I get a Y hat of 337.671. So what is this saying? When the gross domestic product is 1.2 trillion, the carbon dioxide emissions are, predic pre are predicted to be about 337.671 million metric tons. Right? We can do the exact same thing for 2.0. We can plug 2.0 in, and this time we're going to get a predicted carbon dioxide emissions of 494.595 or 593 uh, million metric tons. All right? We can, again, do the same thing with 2.5, this time getting a predicted carbon dioxide emissions of 592.669 million metric tons. Okay, prediction values though are only meaningful, all right, for X values in or close to the range of the data. So if we go back and look at our X values, the original data set has a range from 0.9 to 4.9. Hence, we plugged in 1.2 and 2.5 and 2.0. So it would not be appropriate to use the regression line to predict carbon dioxide emissions for gross domestic products such as 0.2. 0.2 is not in our range, or 14.5, that's way above our range. All right, and then here, guys, uh, this is something that when you maybe print out the lecture notes or, or go back through it on your own, um, I am just walking you through, uh, if you are on a PC, exactly how to install the data analysis tool pack. All right, it's something called an Excel add-in. So you will need to go into your add-ins and just add in this analysis tool pack.
I will tell you that if you're working on a virtual computer, so either in the lab or with me in Hodge 265, this is something you're going to have to do every single time that you get um, on one of these computers. It's not a, it's not a, a, a preference that gets saved for you. Okay, and then here I'm telling you how to get the regression line using data analysis. All right, and then lastly, because we get a ton of summary output uh, with uh, the data analysis tool pack, I'm telling you uh, right now what's important to you. There's only three cells that you need to look at. Multiple R is your linear correlation coefficient. All right, and then um, under uh, a label called coefficients, you can see your y-intercept and your slope.